Rider is a Vancouver-based mineral exploration company with a strong technical team that was historically um, focused on uranium in the Athabasca. But more recently, we've sort of moved away and started looking at other commodities, including gold. So um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Alex Heath. I'm a director with Rough Rider. And today, I'd like to focus on the recently announced Iron Butte Gold project that we have uh, announced that we're acquiring. Before we begin, uh, I want to caution you that I'll be making some forward-looking statements. Actual performance may differ materially from these uh, forecasts. Uh, we're also going to be looking at some historical resources where uh, a qualified person has not um, conducted enough um, activity to, to verify these resources. So the 30,000 foot view of this investment highlight is gold in Nevada, one of the best jurisdictions in the world for mining. We have historical resources which provide a solid foundation. There's exploration upside uh, with the opportunity to add further gold and silver resources and increase value. And we've got exposure to our other projects as well. Zooming into the details of the transaction, so we've got an opportunity to acquire a 100% interest in the Iron Butte Oxide Gold Silver project in Nevada. Uh, it has two re historical resources on it. The most recent one was 13 million tons, grading 0.664 within the Oxide Horizon, uh, which was 221 drill holes. The property has extensive potential in multiple zones on three kilometer strike, and there's also untested zones of anomalous gold mercury and other indicator uh, minerals. So we believe there's an excellent opportunity here to define an economically viable situation on the oxide mineralization defined to date, as well as upside from further exploration. So Iron Butte is actually located just 60 clicks south of the town of Battle Mountain. It consists of 24 unpatented loan claims on 720 hectares, 100% owned by the vendor and these lands are on BLM uh, managed property. It has excellent infrastructure. It's within four kilometers from a state highway and power and can be accessed all year round. Uh, going into the geology a little bit, uh, bear with me, I'm not a geologist. But um, so the, the, the majority of the historical resources are on the Red Ridge zone, which kind of hard to see here, I haven't highlighted it properly, but is in this area here. Here the mineralization outcrops the surface and I'll have a slide here next where you can see that. There's also three satellite zones, the north zone, which is just above the red ridge in here, the south zone down here, and the east zone. The north zone has a, a small uh, resor historical resource on it as well, it's about 5% of historical numbers. And gold and silver mineralization is controlled by north south, north northeast, and south west, or sorry, east west uh, structures on the property. Those are the dark black lines that you see there. Uh, we believe the mineralization is epithermal in nature and it's similar to sediment hosted Carlin type deposits. Okay, here we go. We're looking at this is the Red Ridge zone, uh, sitting on the hillside and outcropping the surface. Uh, this is where the majority of the historical resource is located. Uh, it's such an obvious target that this is where the, the major, so Homestake, Cameco, and Newcrest also own the property and had put around 200 drill holes in there. It wasn't big enough for them, uh, but we think there's still potential to add further ounces. Um, there's not a lot of drill data outside of the Red Ridge zone, but there's uh, plenty of, of, of suggestions that there's continued mineralization. Slide eight shows you a cross section. So that red line up here, this is the red ridge zone. So this is the cross section. Uh, you can see this is the oxide zone above the red line and below that is sulfide. So really we're just interested in the oxide potential. Uh, this is about 100 meters from surface to the red line. So you can, this is what, why we think this property is, is interesting is there's practically no strip um, and it would be amenable to some sort of shallow open pit operation. So there were two historical resources completed. The first in 2009 was done by Aurelio, 
which outlined 300,000 ounces of gold and 6 million ounces of silver. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't distinguish between oxides versus sulfides. In 2010, an additional resource estimate was conducted by Rick Cleath, which did a similar uh, resource estimate, this time separating into the different zones and oxide versus sulfides, uh, but no silver was, uh, was tested here. What we know is that the estimated target at the Red Ridge Zone and some of the North Zone, uh, the drill spacing is too wide at Red Ridge in certain areas, so we can get in there, do some infill drilling, and uh, potentially increase that historical resource. So while we like the potential of the historical resources at Red Ridge, uh, and we believe we can add more ounces with infill drilling, there's still upside on the rest of the property. There's over three kilometers of strike length along the key structures, in addition to 1.5 kilometers of uh, contact between the tertiary volcanics and the basement sediment rocks. The east zone remains open in all directions, right up here, uh, and untested mercury and ar arsenic showings uh, in the southeastern part of the property. We also know that there's zones within the north zone where uh, sulfides were drilled uh, but no testing for the oxides at, at shallower depths. Looking at some of the photos, this is from a recent uh, site visit. Uh, this is what we're looking for here. So this is a west dipping epithermal vein in the north zone. There's also in the same area, Brecher vein stock work between some of the veins. And in the south here, we've got sheeted Vuggy Quartz vein. So from what we've seen in the data, there really hasn't been systematic exploration of the property. They've sort of targeted the obvious uh, red ridge that's outcropping. And they haven't done any sort of systematic drill, uh, sorry, soil sampling, mapping. So we want to get in there and be a little more systematic about it for the rest of the property. Looking at the terms of the transaction, we find them they're very attractive. So we can earn 100% interest uh, by making a million, just under a million dollars in payments over the first six years, back end loaded, and making 1.5 million in payments of shares. Uh, upon a production decision, uh, another million dollars and half a million shares for a total of two million dollars and two million shares. Uh, the, the vendor also retains a two and a half percent NSR, which we can buy down. And there's also milestone payments for certain levels of gold and silver production. So our plans looking forward is first mobilize the field crews to expand the size of the property, land package, and continue to compile the data. We've got this massive data set from the vendor, uh, 40 gigabytes, just going through that right now. Uh, and then in the summer is try to uh, generate a more robust geological model and uh, start looking at areas where we can find uh, drill targets. If we're gonna mobilize the drills to do infill drilling at Red Ridge, we might as well look for areas that we can follow up and potentially hit on the rest of the property. Uh, and then in, in t into next year, once we've had uh, sort of more drilling, uh, look to do an NI-43-101 and a PEA. So we still own, or you know, we're still committed to our, our exploration projects in the Athabasca. We're, we raise money in December, around 300,000 of flow through. That's earmarked to get the initial earn in for the Genesis project from Kivalik Energy. Um, we've also got uh, an option agreement for, uh, it's, this is a VMS project in Northwestern Ontario, which uh, we think is highly prospective as well. Looking at the shares outstanding, Currently got 36 million shares. There's uh, 2 million options and 11 million warrants with about 6.5 million of those that uh, should be expiring very soon. So just to recap, so we have an option to acquire 100% interest in the Iron Butte project. It's gold in Nevada with a historical resource and exploration upside and you get exposure to our other projects. And that's about it. Thank you very much.